correlation of exactly zero is such a rare thing that ruling out a correlation of zero is not that meaningful of an exercise. This video is about statistical significance. I'm going to define it and talk about what it means. And I'm also going to give a bit of a rant. So what does statistical significance mean? It means the scientists in the study had enough data to determine that the correlation between two things is not zero. And one thing that's really odd about this as a concept um, in science is it is an important concept. It's, it's used and for good reason by scientists, but the language is a little bit misleading because the word significance, we've just come to believe that that to mean meaningful or large in importance in some way. And when we say something is statistically significant, it's actually saying nothing about how important a correlation is. Obviously, it's not saying anything about causation. And I think scientists are pretty good about teaching that correlation doesn't equal causation. Now, the ironic thing about statistical significance is that it sounds like it's a statement about the relationship between two variables. But it's not. It's actually a statement about the amount of data that the scientists had. And that's what makes it so misleading. And it's misleading in a couple of different ways. So if you have a ton of data, if you have millions and millions of observations, you're probably going to get statistical significance no matter what two things you look at. And if you only have 30 observations or 20 observations, then you might not get any statistical significance, even if there is truly a meaningful and powerful and large relationship between those variables. So that's probably my biggest complaint about the word statistical significance. Now, I do need to give science some credit here because science has built in mechanisms for self-correcting over time. So if you look at modern papers, they're much less likely to use statistical significance. Instead, they'll use confidence intervals and other ways of communicating the same type of information that isn't so misleading. And this has happened because scientists over time have talked with each other, have recognized this bias, and are trying to slowly work that bias out of the system. And I believe that 50 years from now, or maybe even 10 or 20 years from now, we will have moved on from the language of statistical significance so that we move ourselves away from the cognitive bias that that automatically creates. Now, my second complaint about statistical significance is the fact that a correlation of exactly zero is something that may not happen a lot within a system. So imagine looking inside healthcare systems where you've got different variables like age and gender and how many illnesses do they have, how many comorbidities do they have, and how many doctors are treating the patient, and how many medications are they on, and what is their um, income, what is their education. You look at all of these things related to health and they're all interconnected. So in some ways, it would be highly unlikely to find a correlation of actually zero between any two variables within this system of things that influence health and things that interact with health. Those are all interconnected as long as there's some pathway of connection, we're probably going to find a non-zero correlation. Now, where might you find zero correlations? Well, I mean, for one, there are truly random events, um, things like the weather and, and true coin tosses, lotteries. So there are some random events. But the other way you might find a correlation of zero is just taking two things that are not in the same system. So maybe, I mean, weather and autism, marriage rates in India, and high school dropout rates in the United States, maybe those are so far removed from each other that they're outside of the same system, so the correlation would be expected to be zero, even if you had millions and millions of data points, maybe the correlation would still be zero. 
Now, as long as there is interconnectedness in the world, um, if you have millions and millions of data points, you might find that a correlation of zero is actually a very, very unlikely relationship between any two variables, particularly social variables, because the social world is interconnected. So what I'm saying is a correlation of exactly zero is such a rare thing that ruling out a correlation of zero is not that meaningful of an exercise. So when we talk about statistical significance, it's placing all of the weight on is it a zero correlation or is it not a zero correlation? And that really is just about how much data do we have? Do we have enough data to tease out the correlation? And of course, if there is a large magnitude between the relationship of two variables, it's more likely to be statistically significant with a smaller data set. But that gets muddied. The logic is not always super clear when we're just using statistical significance all of the time. Now, once again, I want to point out that uh, we've figured this out in science. Lots of scientists have said things similar to what I'm saying here and have encouraged each other to move away from statistical significance. That's a fantastic trend. We have to teach it to our students because they're going to hear that language being used if they go into graduate programs in almost any kind of science. But we should teach it with these caveats, and I really think the best way to teach statistical significance is to emphasize this is a term that is describing the amount of data that the scientists have rather than the actual magnitude of the relationship between two things.